Again. So, okay. Okay? Yeah, we're rolling. Oh, all right. Uh, in case you didn't know already, my name is Jen Alvey, and I am the current acting president for Professional Photographers of Idaho, and I am honored to have this opportunity tonight to talk to you a little bit about my journey to professionalism, but also it's going to relate to any of you out there because we all have our own journey. Some of you may be even more advanced in your journey to professionalism than I am even, but this is going to open the door in the conversation for us to talk about um, how we can elevate our, our craft and continue because it really is a lifelong pursuit. Um, what I'm hoping to do is, um, especially towards the end, I'm gonna kind of go through stuff fairly on the, uh, on the first level note, and then if uh, there's time and interest, if we're not completely wiped out and you guys wanna like dive deeper in some of this stuff, I'm hoping those of you will stick around that can add your insights and even chime in. Like this is pretty casual conversation. I'm just sharing my story and hopefully it will help enlighten you and, and uh, connect with you on your, your story as well. I just wanna say there's no one right way to have your journey to professionalism. There's definitely a lot of guidelines and opportunities, things that I didn't know early in the game that I'm gonna share with you. Uh, yes, a lot of it does relate to PPI because I think that was pretty much the launch pad for me to really open the doors to progression, which I'll go over that in just a minute. But um, so, real quick, by raise of hands, how many of you consider yourself a working professional right now in your business? So we've got a handful, okay. How many of you would say you're um, maybe an advanced amateur aspiring professional? Okay. And how many of you would say you're more just a hobbyist? You're just having fun with the camera, no really aspirations to be professional? Or, okay, we all want to make money at this, right? <laughs> Two hands for that, okay. So that's great. Um, in case you haven't heard this quote before, David Trust, who is the president, or sorry, CEO of, P, of, of PPA, so that's the American Professional Photographers of America, and if you didn't know this, PPI is the local state affiliate to PPA, so we're kind of connected in that realm. Um, he told us recently that 70%, they've done a lot of surveys at PPA, 70% of photographers feel they are not professional enough. So how many of you struggle at times calling yourself professional, especially if you're kind of newer at saying that word? I sometimes even do. You know, I mean, it's, it's something you kind of grow into. And um, I think one of the most helpful things as I was pondering this topic is what is professional? Like, what, what, how do you define it? Because I think that's probably where the question mark comes, especially in the industry of photography, because technically it's not regulated. Anyone can have a camera and say they're professional, right? There's nobody check, checking their um, skill set. It's really a matter of buyer beware. So um, if you come here, the definition I saw, these are a couple of them combined. Professional can be engaged or qualified in a profession. So you're actively participating and you've got some credentials maybe. Um, it's one's main paid occupation rather than a pastime. So you can, you can be a photographer and enjoy it, be an amateur and, and have a good time doing it. Um, professional would be most likely you're getting paid for it, which lovely that everyone here wants to get paid for it. So that's what we're gonna talk about. But to take it one step further, professionalism, which is just a little more in depth of what it means to be a professional, uh, the, the integrity of competence of its members, it's like a code of conduct, conduct and uh, these are some synonyms, expertness, qualified, efficient, experienced, skillful, licensed. So how do you become all that in the photography industry, right? How do you become, well, experience you can have all on your own. You know, you don't necessarily have to be part of an organization, but um, the licensed part or qualified or some of the more um, expertness I think can really you can you can obtain through organizations like PPI. So that's a lot of where I gained mine, but I definitely had a journey pre-PPI. So I want to take you there, kind of take you to my beginning, see if it resonates with some of you. So you know, you know all of us start from nowhere, right? Um, for me, I was destined to become a photographer. I don't know if you can see, this is a baby, and this is darkroom equipment. So my dad likes to take his claim to fame and say, you're the reason, or I'm the reason you're a photographer. Um, when I was born years ago, they kind of 
required you pay for your baby before you left the hospital. And he didn't have money to pay for me, and he at the time was enjoying photography. And not as a profession, but more as an advanced amateur. And so he sold all of his dark, work, dark room equipment so that he could take me home from the hospital. So this is my debt to my dad is to, and I didn't even know that till after I got into photography as an adult. So that's my little backstory there. But I still uh, didn't really get into it till after I became an adult and had children. I started out with a camera graduation. That was a gift from my dad. Again, I didn't even realize that that's my story, how I got out of the hospital. Um, I actually went to college for fine art. I loved the arts. I did drawing, painting, sculpting. I loved elements of design. I loved creativity. Um, I started there, and then I started a family. So I didn't quite graduate with that degree. I did get an AA, um, but I always enjoyed creativity. And then, of course, is the, for moms, a lot of times you'll find a mom with a camera. Your children are your inspiration. You want to capture their smiles. You want to, you know, you know how cute they are. You see all those expressions, and you're like, man, I want to, I want to make my own creation of my own creation. <laughs> so your children can be that for you. Uh, and then I got into, I did community ed darkroom. I, I learned how to do some developing of actual film. I'm that age where it was still kind of a thing, crossover to digital. Um, and so I was starting to enjoy it more. And, but it wasn't until I had the opportunity at the church I was attending that I was teaching some of the youth, the, the high schoolers and whatnot. And we had an activity where we were sharing our talents. And I brought my camera. And I kind of messed around with them, took some pictures, showed them how to do what I knew. And that's where it began. Because then people knew that I, I love creativity and I'm a camera. And they started saying, would you take my senior pictures? And I'm like, Sure, why not? This goes back to, as many of you know, you don't know what you don't know till you know. So you say yes to a lot of things. I think that's why a lot of newer photographers say yes to weddings, because they don't know what they don't know. <laughs> then when you know what you know, then you either are all, all the way in weddings because you have the experience, or you're like, I ain't doing those, which I'm of the camp of not doing them. So, But anyway, um, and then in 2008 was when I had my first paid job. That was That's what I earmark is the first paid job Yes, I didn't know what I didn't know. I had a lot of experience still to gain, but um, I accepted money for photographing a high school senior, and then it just snowballed. And that is still my favorite thing to photograph, aside from families. I enjoy that as well. And I'm kind of circling back to my roots with doing more fine art with my photography. OK, so I started out, as many people do, not knowing what you don't know. I was a shoot and burn photographer for a little bit. I would photograph anything, I would give everything, I didn't know anything, and I had a scarcity mindset. I think a lot of you can relate to that. Um, if you might be in a community where you live where some of the people you want to connect with that might be no more than you, they also might have a little bit of that scarcity mindset, which to me looks like uh, don't ask me <laughs> any questions or you're on your own and I don't want to share my location. I don't want to share my post processing. I don't want to share what equipment I use. I don't want to give you any tips because you might take from me and there's not enough to go around. And that's common actually in a lot of industries. A lot of that is just mindset. But uh, I'm just proud to say as part of PPI that I think we've worked really hard these last few years to try to convey that messaging that we are all about community over competition. We are better together. And a rising tide lifts all ships, right? So i um, happy to say that. But that's where I started. Then a couple years later, I realized I needed an education. Uh, I didn't know where to go, didn't know about PPI. I went to WPPI for the first time, so that was one of the larger conventions. And um, I was, it, I look back and I laugh. I had a, there's really no wrong camera, right? You can have whatever camera you have. I had a, a Pentax that the camera company or the Boise camera, um, Boise camera. I know camera. I know camera, thank you, I couldn't think of it. Um, they talked me into it saying, you don't need Canon, you don't need Nikon, this is just as good as anything, which, you know, for a starter camera it was fine, but when I went to a bigger convention like that, um, people were like, you have what? What camera is that? Like, I was wanting help with it, and they're like, I don't even know what to do with this thing. Anyway, eventually I, I got myself some Canon, um, which I'm still a fan of. I also decided to be more selective in doing what I loved, and weddings just wasn't it for me. Um, I also learned about in-person sales with products. That was huge to shift from the shoot and burn 
uh, because it's simple. You know, you can just like, you know, here you go, I'm done. I, I don't have to worry if you don't like my work. We can just like money exchange, really simple. I don't have to worry about, you know, products or having you in my home or uh, having a studio. So it kind of fit the bill at that time. But then I learned all the money I was leaving on the table and how I wasn't providing the full level service a professional could provide. Um, and again, another uh, went to Photoshop world, learned a little bit more about, um, you know, editing the, the post processing part and that kind of thing. All right. And there's also a progression in lighting. So I thought today was a great day with Craig. Um, for many of us, even in the car ride back, we had a great conversation about gear and what gear can do to help you. Um, definitely, it's interesting how sometimes we think it's all about the gear. And I think we've talked a lot on our Friday Lives about how it really isn't all about the gear, but you need the right gear to do the job you want to do. And if you have the knowledge, then you can decide what gear that is, right? So for me, um, I started out with no lighting whatsoever, all natural, and some natural photographers really loved that, and that's great, but sometimes it really that's, they need, they need to know all the tools and, and they're natural because maybe they don't know all the tools. So uh, for me, I didn't, but then I started out, oh, a reflector like we use out today. Sometimes, especially with the horse, maybe you don't have access to using a light without spooking them or there's reasons. But a reflector was like, it really opened the doors for me. Like I can bring light back to my subject. I didn't know that, that was amazing. Uh, then in my in-home little studio space, I learned how to work with constant studio lights. So they were on all the time. I could see the lighting, you know, what was happening on someone's face. It was a great way to learn lighting patterns and it was very in inexpensive. So it's a great way to start and, you know, didn't have a lot of output, not a lot of light there, but I still was able to kind of get a sense of what lighting can do. And then I turned to off camera flash. Again, blew my mind. I don't have to do a ton of post-processing. I can have my skies metered and have everything be the right exposure. It was huge. It really upped my game. And then eventually I learned more about modifiers and how to you know, control your light. And then eventually um, studio strobes. Where, and then I'm like, wow, I can actually have some output because my little lights weren't giving me much. So all of this, of course, happens over a course of time in different places, including um, PPI and the uh, wonderful instructors, sorry, yeah, that I've learned over the years. So I got to the point where I realized I was doing pretty good, it felt good, because I was getting lots of likes on Facebook, I was constantly booked, and I was working and hustling and feeling like, woohoo, I'm, I'm doing it. But then I was realized, I'm not, I don't know if I'm really making money, like I'm working really hard. This is where a lot of people get burnout. And burnout is no fun. Your, your, your wheels are spinning. You're like, okay, I'm missing another holiday time with my family or birthday or events because I'm swamped. Um, I'm getting a lot of likes, but you know, they're all from either the people's family. They're gonna like every picture that those family people are gonna be in. Doesn't mean you're a great photographer. Or they're just my friends who really haven't learned the skill of photography per se. Um, and I had a few photographer friends, but no real mentors. Nobody that I really like could see this advanced skill level that I was aspiring to learn from. And um, I entered the fair and I did okay. And I thought, okay, well, fair's pretty good. But I, I could tell some years that as different judges judge or whatever, I'm like, you know, I don't really know if this is like high level judging. I don't know if this is really a good indicator that I'm doing well, I'm not getting any feedback. It's just like, do I get a ribbon? Do I not? Like, you know, so I was ready for more. I started entering, this was my first experience, I didn't really have a slide for this, but my first experience with PPI, and I don't even remember how I found out about it, honestly, um, but I heard that they were having a print competition. And because I wanted to try my hat in that, and I thought, okay, cool, there's actual judges, you can get critiques, or I can talk to the judges. Um, I came in and entered prior to having joined or met anybody or had anybody really tell me how to do it. Um, but for me, it was like, hey, nobody knows me, if I suck at it, no harm, no foul, I can just leave, you know, I, it was somehow safer, some, so that's what I did. Um, and after I did that, I remember, I even, maybe even gone to, gone to an event like this, um, I don't think that included membership at the time, because I remember Phil White and Kelly Zimmerman, they invited me to join PPI, and they were really encouraging me to be a regular, to participate, and to be a part of the organization, and, um, this is where I felt like I was on that precipice of deciding 
what kind of photographer I wanted to be. Do I want to stay safe in my, this is my world, nobody knows me, No, I don't have to expose what I don't know, um, I kind of feel successful, I don't know if I'm ready to find out what I don't know, and um, I, I kind of came to the point where I have to decide, is ignorance is bliss? Do I stay in the state of stupor? Or do I want to go for knowledge because that's going to give me the tools and power to create what I want? So P Pablo Picasso says, learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. And I kind of was craving that. I kind of wanted to know what I could do with the tools. And at first I thought if I saw the images that were scoring really well at PPI and PPA, some of those styles weren't my style. And I thought if I learn from these people, is it going to change me? Is it going to make me just be a copycat of somebody else? And I was a little worried about that. I wanted just to be me. Um, but I, I have to say that this is very true. You, you learn the rules like a pro and maybe for a period of time you might be emulating someone else to some degree but then you really have the tools to know how to break the rules like an artist. So I did it. Discomfort is the currency to my dreams. If anything you get from this, I want you to really absorb that. Growth always, you're gonna encounter discomfort. You're gonna, you're gonna stretch and reach and maybe embarrass yourself or, or get to a point where you're not sure or you're just out of your comfort zone, but that really is what will lead you to growth and to um, success. So I did it. I decided, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna join PPI. You wouldn't think it'd be that big of a deal, but for me, it kind of was. And, um, and then soon after, I joined PPA, and surprisingly soon after, I became a board member, and I've been a board member ever since. And um, this is my, yeah, my final year on the board basically as president. And I, I loved every minute of it. And so we're gonna kind of talk a little bit about um, what being a part of this organization, it's not all about PPI, but it's a big part of it because this is our state local grounds level area where we get to work with each other and help each other grow. And I didn't realize all this was available to me when I first joined PPI. So I'm hoping since we do have a few newer people here, um, and I hope those of you that are longtime members, you'll also chime in if there's something you wanna add to this um, as to how it really can advance you in your journey to professionalism. Here's just a general pro checklist. Um, if you're brand new to photography, we've already talked about website, thanks to Mia and SEO and all of that. Some of this is pretty obvious, but if you hadn't thought about it, you might want to consider it, especially things like registering your business, you know, having that sales tax ID number, and you're paying tax that you collect. You got to be insured. You know, you don't want the liability of, and believe me, there's a lot of people that have issues. Um, you want to make sure you're covered. Even being part of PPA allows you some, afford you some insurance coverage um, for a variety of things as well. Um, get him, okay, so join PPI and PPA. This is a big one I'll talk about as well, is getting a mentor. Now, um, that can change over the years. It can be this person here for this, this person here for that. Doesn't mean you need to be stuck at their hip and do everything they do. But it does mean that you are reaching out to someone that you see their work and you want to be, learn more like what they do, or you appreciate what they do, even if it's not your genre, and they can help be that guide to you because that was huge for me. Um, decide your focus, you know, and what, what's the right equipment for what you need. I've already talked about that. Um, and then developing your business practices, workflow, and products. This is where being a part of PPI is really helpful because we have our regular Friday lives where you get to hear from our gear nerds that do a great job telling us about stuff like that, or we have guest speakers that come on, uh, our members connect that's twice a month. You can um, connect with other photographers. I know part of the uncomfortableness about asking for help is feeling like you're not just leeching information from someone unwantingly. But when you're part of a group and a community and we're all helping each other, and you're paying a, a fee to be a part of it, like you're doing your part, you're paying your due, so to speak, you're participating, you're showing up, you're helping, it's fair game, right? We, it's, it's great, nobody needs to feel uncomfortable for that. Um, that's the environment which you can get that help. Um, consider shadowing a professional or be a second shooter. You know, do the groundwork and, and put in the time. Learn your cost of doing business and price for profit. In our organization, we have some really great individuals that Sam Marvin comes to mind. He actually does, um, um, what do you call it, 
training, coaching, thank you. He does coaching. Um, a, lo a lot of people in our organization have uh, a lot of skills in this area. And I'll just briefly go over that in this slide and we can go back to it if you want to learn more and there's time. Continuing your education, for me, a lot of that is image competition, honestly, and going to conventions and coming to events like this. Any questions on this before I move along? Because I'm just kind of rolling through. Okay. So here we're going to talk a little bit about that starving artist. I know when you're a newer photographer, it's really uncomfortable to think someone, you value your work enough to have somebody pay their hard earned dollars, especially when you feel like it's just your time. Like, oh, I, can, I, I love this. I feel guilty taking money when it's something that's like a passion and it feels like fun. Uh, or you might say it comes easy to me. So why would I, I would never pay this amount of money for my work. Not everybody has your skill set. You think about all the other professions out there, right? A dentist, a doctor, those people, maybe that they've gone through the education, whatever, but maybe it comes easy to them. They have that knowledge and it's not hard. But so this is just important to think about. Don't give away your work. I know sometimes when you're building your portfolio, you might be tempted to give away free sessions and things like that. You can you can shoot family and friends, but I, I would caution you against starting the habit of like putting out their free work. Um, so Real briefly, um, if you belong to PPA and you go to their website, on the benefits section, there's an amazing resource for you for knowing how to um, price for profit and understanding what is considered a healthy benchmark for whether you're um, a home studio or whether you're a retail location. What they're suggesting, and this is years of study, is the benchmark is 25% for your cost of sales, meaning you should spend no more than a quarter of your total sales on the cost of producing your products. Uh, but you also need to know what is cost of sales? What's that referring to? So that's you know going into, well, and I don't probably shouldn't go into all this right now, but you also need to know your, your general and your fixed expenses. This is part of educating you so that you find you're not paying someone for you to take their pictures, because believe it or not, if you're not accounting for a lot of this stuff, you could literally be doing a, a lot of work and you're, you're not even making a profit. So part of it is educating yourself. Same with the owner's compensation, making sure you're paying yourself a personal income, and, uh, and then you have your net profit, which is the money left over after you've paid all the bills. And then this is a definition of your gross sales or total revenue. Um, for me, this stuff sounds like garbly gut. Blah, 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 blah. I like I, I money and numbers. That's not my thing. I like visual and art and creative. But if you want to have longevity and if you want to be sustainable, you got to make sure that you understand this stuff so that you can, of course, have a profit. And then this is just their um, awesome graphic on their site. Just shows you kind of how it breaks down. If you want to make $60,000, uh, then it shows you what you need um, because you have different percentages for home or retail to have in sales annually in order to net um, or have that pro owner's pay of $60,000 a year. And then this is a great one you could look at later as well. Um, just simply understanding the cost of an 8x10. Sometimes we just, as a newer photographer, you might look at it and say, oh, if I go to the lab, it's only a few bucks. So I don't know, $10? <laughs> so you got to look at all the time that goes into uh, creating that 8x10 in addition to the hard costs of printing it. So this is a great little calculator that we could go over later as well. Okay. Now I want to shift. Yes. I know. I'm just. So. Thursday, driving up. So Mm -hmm. They're the only person who can buy them, right? It's their family. Right. The landscape, you can sell one and it's multiple times. So is there a difference in you know, the 25% cost of goods? Has PPA looked at any difference between portrait versus landscape? So if you didn't hear the question, what Carrie was asking is what is the difference between something like this where you're printing one time for a family and you can put all the costs in there versus say a landscape <laughs> photographer who puts a lot of that upfront cost in the first edition and additional prints, then you have less of that cost and more of just the cost of the materials. Um, I didn't see anything on PPA's site, but I haven't looked and I personally don't, don't um, sell that. Does anybody else in the audience have experience in that and want to share their insights? Because that is a very valid question. Um, 
I would imagine it could spread over the course of those uh, multiple prints, but do you have a guarantee of how many prints you're going to sell? Probably not. If it, in, of course, as time goes on, costs of uh, goods can go up and you've got shipping involved. So, so Bob? I'm just going to put it this way. The way that we've handled that with our commercial imaging is you're selling it based on the formula to start with, and each time you sell it, you're making a lot more money. Would you compare that to, uh, you just bought a camera, so the first person that comes along wants pictures, they're going to pay for that camera versus <laughs> 10 people, you know? Yeah, I wouldn't consider it the same way. There's different, there's diff even different tax yeah. implications for buying a camera, whether you're going to depreciate that as a, a good or, you know, how you're going to handle that. So, no, I wouldn't equate it the same well, Yeah, it's going to be paid for over time, like she's referring to with uh, landscape photo. Right. And if, it, if you could guarantee that you're going to sell that same image over time. I think basically what Bob is saying is the rule of thumb is you want to assume the worst case of possible for you and make sure anything above that is going to be profit. Assume, yeah, assume the worst and then additional would be, would be the, uh, the, the profit margin that you would really want. So, but that's a really great question. How many here have entered any kind of image competition, whether it's FAIR or PPI or PPA? Okay, well, a good chunk of you. Um, how many have entered um, PPI? Fewer. And PPA? Okay, I can see, it's hard to see. So even fewer, okay. So um, I wanna just tell you right here, right now, it's not about the awards, it's not about the ribbons. Yes, that's nice, it is nice, I will say that. But it's not, it's not about that. It's really all about learning how to see an image and having another more advanced judge who has been trained in the 12 elements and, and so forth to, uh, to, to learn from the masters. Back in, in, the, in like Renaissance times or whenever, before photography, there were painters, right? And people would go to literally sit with the masters and follow what they were doing and paint with them until they learned those tools to then create their own art. And I find um, that this opportunity, when you enter image competition, gives you that chance, especially if you're ordering the critiques or you're talking to the judges, even just talking to your mentors who have, have entered and um, have gained some insights can be helpful. Yes, it's not a perfect system. Yes, it can be somewhat subjective, but the overarching lessons learned there will advance you to the point where you can, one, feel more confident charging your prices because we talked at the beginning, professionalism includes your skill set and your, um, uh, what were the terms? Anyway, all of those terms, um, light, yeah, to help you feel more confident and also it will pour over into your client work. They'll, you'll learn like little tidbits here and there, especially for me was posing, like as simple as hands. I didn't even think about hands till I started imaging, Im, uh, image competition and I got dinged points because they saw the back of the hand instead of the side of the hand or you know the S-curve. Now some of that you can learn otherwise, but it really sticks with you a whole lot more when you put your image out there. You paid the time and money to get it out there and you hear that critique and you're like, ah. Oh, I'll never do that again, you know, or I'll definitely be aware of that. So, um, so when I um, first started, like 2015 was my, or 14 was when I joined PPI, I had maybe entered the state before, but this was the first time I entered districts, which is run by PPA. You've got two levels for PPA. You have the districts, which for us is like the Western, like five states or something like that. And then you have the IPC, which is International Print Competition. That's our nat national one. Um, and you have those same image images can be sent to both. And the first one, you can get critiques and change if you want. And then you send it to the second one to get your merits. But I will tell you, um, the first time I entered two cases, I was ambitious. I entered the regular photographic one, and then I entered the artist case. And both of them, all eight images, no merits. And I entered physical prints. It was a lot of expense, a lot of time, a lot of energy. And I was like, oh, really? No merits? Um, which a merit, if you don't know, is an, a score of 80 or higher. So it has to hit at least that. Um, well, of course, now it's just thumbs up, thumbs down. So it's changed over the years. But um, point being is, after I got my critiques from the judges, I made some changes, and I entered IPC, and I ended up with three merits. So at least I got some, and it worked. It worked. It helped me advance what I was doing, and I learned a lot from that. 
Um, and continuing on from that, I just wanted to say, before I get to the next slide, um, a lot of times we, we do, naturally, we're humans, we compare, right? We, we look at other people's work, and sometimes it can be kind of discouraging. I don't know if you've heard the story about the Olympic swimmer, and I don't even remember the details to tell you the year or the name. All I know is the story happened. <laughs> and that was somebody was, um, or maybe you could just say in general, um, if you're swimming, say, for speed, if you pay attention too much of your energy looking to see how close your competition is, you're not gonna have the same energy you have to maybe win and it can slow you down and you can lose the race. So theoretically speaking, um, comparing yourself to others really can just slow you down. Yes, you wanna learn from the masters. Yes, you wanna gain these tools, but you don't necessarily feel like you need to become that person or you need to like completely mirror them. You really wanna have all of that filter through yourself and because as you know, nobody can be win, right? Only win Mickey can be win. And if he tries to be Jen, He's going to fail at it because I'm the best gen there is, right? So you want to look at whoever there is, learn from them, but not compare to the place that you're, you're not being yourself. So this is all to say, too, that um, this next slide I'll show you, I had an image that I entered that I did that, that very thing. I thought, you know, I love fine art, and I'm, I haven't really seen this done before, but I'm going to create something for me. I'm going to take what I know so far in the game, and I'm just going to make my own thing. And I really loved it, and I entered it, and I'm like, I don't know if it's going to do very good. I was a little self-conscious about it because it was something a little bit on the different, um, but it actually surprised me, and it, it got 100, which was a perfect score at districts. So it was even because we hosted districts that year, so we didn't have our state image competition. and. Um, this opened my eyes to the fact that one strong image can, can really open a lot of doors. Um, and, and this one image had all of these po possibilities to gain a awards and recognition. Of course, I also entered the fair that year too, but um, it, it really blew me away. But you know what blew me away more than anything, aside from the awards, was that this was me putting my, who I was out there and it was received well. And yes, I was a puddle when it got the score because it was, it was me not trying to be somebody else. It was just being me. So I just, I definitely learned from that and um, wanted to pass that on. In your journey to professionalism, be you. Be the best you can be, but learn from others. Um, then one of my next steps was earning the Idaho Fellow of Photography. Um, I won't go into deep about it, but this is something that by joining PPI, you have the opportunity to gain accreditation where you can have um, an actual medal that you get to wear wherever you want at our conventions. Um, and to do this, you would have opportunities to gain merits through image competition and getting um, a score, well, a merit, we don't score it anymore, or um, also through service and through education. So we'll tell you more about that later if you're new to PPI, but this is a wonderful opportunity over the years to have all of the efforts you're making to improve, to kind of go towards something that you can show for. Um, and you can now have, uh, like I have the credentials of ID dash, no, yeah, ID, no, PPI, it's, it's the, yeah, it's ID dash PPI, I think is what it, it's called after my name. It's your, your credentials. If you think about a dentist or a doctor that, or a counselor, they typically have accreditation credentials behind your name. And for some people, that may be important to them to say, oh, you have some qualifications. You've done something in your industry. So I'm proud to say PPI offers that. OK. Then in 2018, uh, I was blown away <laughs> because my very first image at PPA, my very first loan image, also was selected to represent the USA in the World Photographic Cup. Didn't end up going all the way, but there starts out with 18 images from, P, from PPA, well, no, from, from the United States, but PPA is the one that curates it. Um, and then eventually, a few of those are selected to actually go to the World Cup. So again, um, a single image, you know, maybe not all your work, you know, hits that mark, but it definitely causes one to um, want to continue to develop and continue to aspire because you just never know 
what opportunities that will give you. And had I not been a member of PPI or PPA or entered, this is not something you apply for, they actually select it, so I didn't even know that this could happen. Um, but I was able to be on stage at, P at Imaging USA with people like Ben Shirk and the Munoz wedding people that seemed to win all the wedding. And um, anyway, there's a lot of amazing people that I, I felt so honored to be up there and be a part of that. And uh, then in 2020, my, my second uh, ever, now it's called Image Excellence. It used to be a loan, but it's the same thing um, when you get that second level of distinction. Um, also was published in the PPA magazine, and they showed uh, kind of the back um, story and how it was all the settings and whatnot and how I created the image called Meltdown in 321. Honestly, this image would not have gotten to this point had I not had mentors. I had uh, a few people look at it. I had Robin, Robin Spencer help me pick this name. She's amazing at titles. There's nothing wrong with having people help you. And you know what? It's not that they did it for you. You learn from them, and then next time you can continue to do it on your own. So I just want to say it's, it really is a community effort when you are um, continuing your skill set and uh, entering or whatever it is you're doing, you're learning. Um, let's see, and that year I also um, earned my master of photography degree. So just like PPI has its, um, the fellow you can earn, PPA does the same in its realm and you can earn another credential of your master of photography degree. And that was huge. I'm, I'm excited that hopefully this January I'll make it to imaging since last year COVID um, we couldn't be, meet in person and I'll get a walk across the stage and be presented with that degree. Um, and you know, it may not mean everything to everybody. Some of my clients um, definitely helps qualify my prices as I continually try to raise my prices, and I know I'm ready to do that again. Um, when they see me, me publishing the, the work that I'm doing to continue my own education, not that it's all about the awards, but when, when my clients who follow me see that I am working to continue to learn and grow, they feel more confidence, I believe, in hiring me. They say they do. Um, they might refer me to other people because everybody wants to refer somebody that they feel really confident about. You go to see an awesome movie, you go to an amazing restaurant, and you're confident that they're gonna have a great experience, you wanna be the one to send them there, right? So you wanna kinda build that through um, your journey to professionalism as well. As a member, as a um, master of photography, once you get that degree, you have the uh, first year of membership free from the American Society of Photographers. This is an affiliate, just like PPI is, this is an affiliate of PPA, it's not PPA, it's separate, but they kind of work together like cousins. Uh, they do have their separate um, fees to be a member, um, but the benefits, so far I've, I'm almost ending my first year of free membership and I will have to say, I'm definitely thinking I'm gonna have to continue on because I have learned so much being a part of this group as well. Um, they have every Thursday, they have a, re, um, so the people, as you get to rub shoulders with people in uh, the national organization, um, judges and people who are very um, advanced in their skill set, uh, these are the people that are in this society that gives you the opportunity, just like in this group, and I'm not saying one's better than another, it's just, if you want to have mentors in that group, this is the place that it's acceptable. And they, every Thursday, will have one of the people of their group go on and teach for an hour for free. And you get to learn from them. And it's recorded, and I can watch it later um, on their site. And from here, I, uh, this year, had a mentor, because just like we like to do here, they had a mentor um, program where you could say what you wanted to learn, and they would connect you with one of the people in this organization to mentor you. And, um, and so right now I have Brian Welsh, who many of you know, he spoke at our uh, convention last year, who's working with me 10 hours they offer their time to, to meet with you on Zoom and help you with what you're wanting to do. And then also I had um, Karen McCall help me with my images this year as I entered, um, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, also you can become a certified professional photographer. How many of you here didn't know that was even a thing? You can be certified. Do you all knew that? Okay, that's great. So you can be certified. Um, this is huge. We have two uh, CPP is what we call it for short, CPP liaisons in our state. And one of them is right here with us, Mr. Bob Ryder, and then Phil White, who recently had a class at his studio to help people in that process. 
in the room, how many CPP uh, do we have that have earned it? Because we've been working on it really hard this year. So we've got, what, three of us? Okay. And I know there's more working on it as well. So um, this is wonderful. If For me, I am less a technical person when it comes to photography. I'm not a gear person, and I, I struggle sometimes with some of the technical stuff. Um, this was really helpful for me to get to a place where it built my confidence that I know I've gone through the, the really important key things that I could um, hit any, any particular photography opportunity and figure it out because I have had this, this uh, basic overarching um, skills that now I'm, I'm certified. And you can, you can put it on your website, you can put it on your emails as they go out, people see that you're certified. And um, for, for a lot of people that means something. And if they don't know, you can tell them, you can educate your client what that means. All right, um, almost to the end here, folks. Um, this year, this is my latest case for, for image competition this year. And this is the first year I've ever had all of my four images that were sealed at districts, meaning they all got their merits. And that IPC, two of them got image excellence, which means I meddled for the first time. Didn't even know what that was till recently. So um, I, I got the gold medal of the year is what they call gold, gold photographer of the year. You can get up to um, diamond, which would be all four images merit and all four images um, get imi uh, image excellence, uh, which would be amazing as well. And then this was the first year I was asked to be a judge. You know, it all started where I entered the fair and thought that was the big to do and was so excited. And I still, I, I love entering, but um, I was honored to ask to, to be a judge at the fair and I found it um, very fulfilling. I really enjoyed being a part of that process. And, um, and I'm definitely, and this particular set of images was in the artist category. Now that I've earned my masters, I thought it'd be fun to focus my interests over into the, um, the getting a, a master artist degree because they offer what four now at PPA, you've got wedding, you've got artists, you've got photographic open and you've got, um, or maybe it's just three. Am I missing one? That's photographic open. And then you have wedding, and then you have artists, and maybe that's it. Because artists can also be re image restoration if you like restoring images. Um, and in case you didn't know, in this particular, you would need to re have your guide images, your, your reference images of what you use to create your, your piece. So it's judged a little differently. It's on your ability to create, create an artistic piece out of, you know, so a lot of it could be digital editing, depending on, but it doesn't have to be, so, um, okay. So PPI uh, brought me a lot of service opportunities. If you're a member of PPI, it's not all about what can you give me, how can you teach me, who is my mentor. A lot of it is giving back. And as you give service, you can also earn merits for your um, distinctions as well. But without, I never joined PPI aspiring to be where I'm at as president. I, I wasn't even sure if I wanted to be a board member because it seemed like a lot of responsibility. Um, but I have learned so much and so much of what I've learned in leadership opportunities, I've carried over to our other business. I'm a photographer and we have our seasoning company. So I have opportunities to learn how to work with people and, and you know, plan board meetings and you know, lead and speak. And I've met so many amazing new people. You know, when you're on a board, you're putting together conventions, you're working with PPA judges and speakers and you're bringing them to our state. And then when you see them at imaging, you're now friends. Or if you now need a mentor, you've got people that you know that you can comfortably ask them for, your, for their help or advice. And it's not weird because you're already friends. Um, just showed a picture too of, of recently we had um, David Trust asked to come and, and be part of our, um, our board retreat as we, we created our new board this year. And he came and, and gave us amazing training. And all of these things I wouldn't have without being a part of PPI. So I feel like I owe a great debt to this organization. And I just want to offer that to the next generation as we continue to need people to be part of our board, um, that it's, it's, it is, it's not paid, it's volunteer. This is all nonprofit, guys but you get paid in so many other ways. And, um, and the friendships to me are a big part of that as well. 
So we preach community over comp uh, competition, and I just wanted to just like, off the top of my head, there's many more than this. These are people, as I went through my journey to, to professionalism, that have really, I, I can say, have helped me in specific areas. And some of them are completely different than others. Some of them were, were image competition uh, feedback. Some of them were helping me, like, simple as learning how to use Trello. Bob is an expert at Trello. Um, you know, that helps me in, in all of my businesses now. And I would not have known that had I not rubbed shoulders with Bob, you know, or uh, different other skill sets. I, I didn't want to go through everything or I'll miss something, but you get the idea. It, it really is a community that builds how you can advance your skills. And last but not least, I just wanted to say mindset is a big part of success. Any professional, this can be across the board for any occupation. So I'm just gonna real quick share these with you and then I'd love to open it up for conversation. Um, not failing is not a goal. I know we don't like to fail, but that really shouldn't be your goal because that's really what's gonna happen for you to grow and learn. So you just have to be prepared for failure sometimes. Opportunities are everywhere. Sometimes we get in a mindset that if it doesn't go a certain way, then we're stuck. Um, my only job is to believe and to take steps forward. There is enough success for all of us. That's the abundance mindset. Everything is figure outable. We've got the Google guys and we've got each other. So <laughs> um, it's okay for people to be wrong about me. When you're in leadership positions, especially, you know that there's gonna be some people that might not like you. They might say things that aren't true about you or they might just misunderstand you. Um, hopefully as adults, we know that that's just life and don't let that, don't let that keep you from progressing. I'm capable of learning, done is better than perfect. Uh, the only way I fail is if I quit. It can take as long as necessary, so you just gotta keep going. Nobody else needs to believe in me, that's my job. As much as we want everyone to believe in us, really, you just need to believe in yourself. And other people's success is proof of what is possible. Uh, I love that too. Instead of looking at somebody else who might have gotten all the awards the year you thought you should have got them, and you're like, oh. You just have to look at it as, you know what? It just lets me know that this is possible and maybe next time I'll be the one. And finally, I'm not going to compare my start to someone else's middle or end, okay? It's, it really is a lifelong pursuit. Photography is one of those things where if you're not continually finding fulfillment from it, then you're probably not still learning, which means you need to go back to some of these other ones and, um, and look at opportunities are everywhere. Um, even during the pandemic, right? There was opportunities there for us to like, you know, try something new. Maybe something we couldn't do before forces us to, you know, think of something outside the box of, of what's in, in the home or in the studio. And coming back to the, really what professionalism we defined before is all about, you know, if, if it's about being licensed and skillful and having, you know, competence of its members and a code of conduct, we need to know what that is. If you don't know what you don't know, you can't, you can't advance to that. Um, and hopefully, we continue to uh, reach out to others and be that, that helping hand to help people um, continue to learn and educate each other um, so we can raise that standard, right? We're the ones that help our clients know what to expect. And if we want to help other people have a good experience and uh, want to pay for professionalism, then we need to be an example of what that is. So this is just my last slide, just in case you don't wanted to follow me, I just thought I'd put that on there. Um, these are now things that I can put on my website. Um, at the bottom of my website is some of my accomplishments or organizations I'm a part of. And again, that goes back to showing your professionalism. It's okay to show that to people. You need to be able to share to people why they should hire you and pay professional prices. Um, it's just one way that can build your confidence and the confidence of your clients. Um, not to say this is all that, People can be amazing with all that. Um, it just helps, I believe, in adding to, um, conveying that to people, because we all, we all want to have some kind of proof of that, I think. Um, so having said all of that, is there anything you want to go back to? Or I would love to hear from some of you that have been members for a while. Do you feel like some of this has also been your journey? Could you relate to those feelings or some of those experiences? And if so, please share. I mean, I, that was kind of a general share, but chime in if there's something you yourself might have experienced. 
I, I know, I'm trying really hard to be, the fire's over there. <laughs> um, and if not, that's fine. Was there anything that, as far as like, some of the, um, coming back to? Yes. Jen, I would add one thing. Which one? I would add one thing. Oh yes, please do. Um, as we go through this journey that you're presenting, uh, at some point we have to be honest with ourselves. We have to reach that point where we realize that, okay, maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was, or I think I am. Maybe I really do need to take this to the next uh, level as we're here today. And um, one of the things I came up with was, uh, because I do a little bit of mentoring even at my level, uh, what I came up with was, if you go out and you did a photo shoot and it was easy, there was something wrong with that. Okay. <laughs> uh, it should feel like work. Okay. feel like you had to put an effort into it. And uh, then you know you're doing something right. Well, it definitely says that you're stretching. Right. So if it, you're right, if it's if things are coming ho-hum or mundane, then I think it's time to continue to branch out and see what it is that you don't know. And I think that's why um, having people look at your work and mentor you helps you see those things. I, when I first entered image competition, I thought the judges didn't know anything. And I mean, I, they knew something, but it was like, eh, they, they're, they're, they're missing it. And I've even recently seen some of the, the judges themselves post in the, after the recent um, national competition that remind people that even they don't score well sometimes. And sometimes once you've had the image just done, you have a hard time even seeing what could be wrong with it, why it's perfect. But it takes skill and time and sometimes you have a little distance from that image and you come back to it. I look at some of my older images that I've entered and hopefully all of you get to the place where you're looking back at your earlier work and you just kind of shake your head and go, oh my gosh, I totally remember thinking that was the bomb at the time and I can totally see now. So that can give you proof to know that if somebody else, a judge or someone more advanced, um, you know, says that's great, but think about these things or look at this, to know they're probably right and to not just disregard it just because you haven't quite developed an eye and a skill set to see it. Um, to be open for learning, for sure. And it is work. Photography's work. But hopefully it's fun, too. It's fun work. It's fun work. It's fu it should be fulfilling, that creative um, element that you can put, put through you that's creating something that is valuable to somebody else that can be appreciated. So, all right. Well, I think maybe they'll call that done. If there isn't anything else people want us to share. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Hopefully it was beneficial to you. Okay. And now I can put my...